quick because this is what I'm looking at. It's fading fast. I basically created a gradient from my brightest bright all the way down to my darkest blues and then some earth tones for the landscape over in here and uh, we'll see what we can accomplish. One of the things that we're going to focus on is less on drawing. I'm not going to draw a whole lot in the sky because I want to keep my colors clean and so really for a sunset painting like this where it's mostly a skyscape and 90 percent of the painting is featuring the sky you want to focus more in on blocking in tones rather than the drawing however a lot of that is going to depend on the nature of your location so that's really one of the first steps that you want to do is to probably scout out ahead of time what is a good location to do your sunset painting or sunrise painting and the fact of the matter is is that it doesn't have to be a situation like this where you're on an open plane you can also do a sunset painting with a very active scene even in the city but that's something that you want to predetermine and know ahead of time so that you're not left hunting for a location but that you've kind of pre-scouted your locations and you know what your composition is going to be ahead of time and it takes a little bit of planning like that. But once you've determined that, you want to um, do like we saw, pre-mixing your colors as best as you can, rather than maybe the standard thing that you would do in a plein air painting, which is focusing on the drawing first. You want to pre-mix colors, and that is sometimes a standard protocol for some artists, but for plein air painting like this, it's that much more important because we don't want to spend a lot of time free mixing and trying to make judgment calls, especially since the colors and the lighting is going to change quickly. You want to have a combination of colors that you mix that are warm, the oranges, yellows, and reds, that will obviously be in a plein air painting of the sunset, but you also want to make sure that you also have some cools. The, the natural color of the sky is typically rather cool and depending on the details of your sunset or sunrise there's going to be a combination as well as shifts from cool to warm and so make a variety of blues and greens and purples as well as oranges reds and yellows and you want to think about uh, creating multiple values as well for those so that you can create some three-dimensionality three in any clouds that you may have and create depth in your sky and landscape. Standard protocol would be to have four to five tonal values. However, the sky itself may not have that many values, and so you may opt for truncating your pre-mixing to just what you're observing in the sky within a three-value range and then allow yourself to free mix the landscape. In this situation, I really tried to observe all of the colors that I was seeing in tones and values since only a small portion of the canvas was going to be the landscape. I decided to include that in there. One thing that you can see me doing here is I'm laying down and gradating my hues and my colors as I go and observing the shifts that occur in between local colors like red and orange and yellow and something that's close to pure white as and looking to see when and where in the sunset those shifts from the warmer colors shift into the cooler colors the blues and the purples remember when you're thinking about a shift like that going from a red to a blue is going to have an intermediary color of a purple going from a yellow to a blue is going to have an intermediary green. And so typically these are things that you can kind of observe and look at the sky and the colors that you're seeing and ask yourself, is it warm or is it cool? And think about the tonal value. Is it you know high value or low value? And so right now I'm kind of just putting in colors next to each other um, and letting the kind of composition of the sky take place. One thing that you want to remember whenever you're doing any kind of a landscape painting 
is to think about the different planes that occur so that you can create depth. And those planes are going to help you delineate your tonal values. So when we think about the sky, we want the sky to be the brightest object in the scene. And the only thing that might um, add to that is if you have a sunset over water or reflection over water. And even then, typically that reflection is going to be lower in tonal value than the light source, which is the sun here. So we want to save pure white or almost pure white for the sun itself, if that's in your scene. And we want to slowly lower the tonal value, keeping the sky the brightest thing. Then you're going to have your ground plane. In this case, it's a field of corn and grass. And in this case, it's a field of tall grass and corn, I believe. And that's going to be receiving a lot of the light that's fading, being cast by the sun. And so it's going to be the next lightest thing in relationship to the sky. But even within the sky itself, here you can see me laying in some clouds. Those clouds are going to be darker than other objects in the sky. And so you can kind of break each object down, but you need to remember that, for instance, the shadows of the clouds in the sky still need to be brighter than tonal value than the ground plane, which needs to be slightly darker than everything in the sky. And then the ground plane itself will have some gradations of tonal value, shadows and light, and then but it still needs to remain brighter than your vertical objects, which would be the distant tree line that you see that I laid in with that almost nearly black. Now when you're looking into a sunset like this or directly towards the light source, a lot of times when it a lot of times when you look directly into a light source the colors outside of the sky itself are going to appear very dim and desaturated, almost black. And so be careful not to actually go too desaturated or fully black, but to recall what you know about the local color and desaturate from there. So I know that, that distant tree line is green as a local color. And I also know that because of atmospheric perspective, it's going to be more desaturated and more towards the cooler colors, so more of a bluish green. But on top of that, I know that it's going to be desaturated. So really on camera, it looks like a dark gray, uh, almost a black. And visually, as I'm looking at the scene, it looks kind of like a black. But I'm going to resist that urge to use black. Instead, I'm going to mix a dark blue and desaturate it from there. And that's going to give you something that has more life, more color, more atmosphere, and more feeling to it than using black paint or overly desaturating it. One thing too is on camera, if, if you use a camera to try and capture a sunset or a sunrise, it's going to turn any objects like that far too black. And the, the problem with that is that if you make something black, especially um, using black paint, the tonal value is going to really drop. And the thing to remember with that is that the lower the tonal value, the closer to black it is, the closer it will appear in the picture plane. That is, it'll appear close to us rather than farther away. And so using black can really mess up not just your tonal values, but it can also mess up your sense of depth and your perspective. And so Remember, when you have objects like this, while it does need to be the darkest thing in the scene, um, don't be tricked by maybe a, a, a photo that you've taken, and don't be tricked by your eyes. Use what you know to think about that local color, and it's going to be somewhat shifted by the warmth of the light that's hitting it, and it's going to be somewhat shifted by atmospheric perspective. So it's going to be dark, very desaturated, slightly warmed by the color of the sunset, um, but essentially it's still going to retain some of the qualities of green. Once you've laid in your colors side by side, you can see me going in now with a clean, soft nylon brush. You can see me going in with a clean, soft synthetic brush. And now I'm blending some of those edges and making sure that I have soft edges and soft transitions 
in the sky. I can pick up some paint and blend it into the paint next to it and I can, I'm cleaning my brush off each time here making sure that the brush is relatively clean and just softening some of those brush strokes. Another thing I think that really helps with this and getting a good effect is making sure that the surface you're painting on is a smooth surface. So this is a standard canvas panel that I bought from my local uh, Blick art supplier. However, I treated it myself with extra layers of gesso and sanding it down so that it didn't have quite such a strong canvas weave, but that there was a little bit of that tooth, a little bit of that texture, but that it was more or less kind of a smooth surface like you would get with a wood panel or a, um, a hard surface to paint on. So this was kind of an intermediary step and had a little bit of tooth and a little bit of canvas, maybe similar that you would see on a linen panel. But you can definitely affect the surface, either pre-buying a surface you know that you like, or you can adjust the surface yourself. But I think for smooth gradients in the sky, typically you want a smoother surface, and at some point you want to utilize softer brushes to help you get those blends. So here you can see me, I've blended out that um, aura from the sun and making those softer transitions to kind of create that feeling of light, to create that feeling of atmosphere and distance. And even now, just a short time period into this painting, maybe 15 or 20 minutes in to the painting process, you can see that the light has changed dramatically. I think at this point the sun is no longer above the horizon. And that's where we have to stick to our guns in terms of what we saw and what we observed. You want to not chase the light. You don't want to continually change the composition and the lighting and the color mid-painting and change your horse midstream. You want to stick with the original vision that you had and as we go farther and farther into the painting process we're actually going to look less and less at our reference or use the reference out in front of us for less and less detail and more and more in terms of a conceptual framework. Because the clouds are moving in this situation, because the sun has moved, because the temperature of the light has changed and the colors and the hues have changed, all of these factors will create a disaster if you let yourself continually change what you're seeing and just trying to capture it. Now, that's also going to be one of the main reasons why we pre-mixed our colors because essentially we're establishing a vision for the piece of artwork that we're trying to create and a vision for what we the moment that we want to capture. And then you start the painting process and you really want to try and stick to your vision as much as possible. I think for realistic painters, this can be a really difficult thing because we spend so much time training ourselves to look at our reference, to look at the thing in front of us, and to try and capture that as best as we can. But really, you want to try to practice, and this is, I think, the benefit of doing scenes that are fugitive, doing scenes that change, is that it's a combination of looking at what's in front of you but also remembering how it made you feel, remembering how what, what it looked like, and going off of that. And that's just one of the really strong, unique challenges of a sunset or a sunrise because even a camera will not quite freeze those things. It'll give you skewed colors because of the dynamic range. And so it's a really great practice to build your memory, to build your observation skills, and to um, help you hone in on that artistic feeling, that sense. You know, I think a lot of times with painting, we're not trying to capture um, the semantics of a scene. We're trying to capture the way a scene made us feel. And if you can do that, I think that you've made a really great painting. The last thing you saw me do here was pull out that palette knife and actually use some impasto white to really make the white of the sun um, very thick and to seem like the brightest part of that light. Here's the mess I made. 
here's the finished product. Remember, you have a voice that matters. Go be creative. I'll see you next time.